what we do here is go back, 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 back. This is the way you would see a lot of toys. Can you put on the next one, please? Shoppers. 
And this is a Hasbro image that I got off. You've probably seen this before. Uh, however, this is what attracts people to buying the toy. So this just shows how important packaging is. Not to mention, I personally feel the package keeps the toy immaculate, pristine, clean. You don't want to buy something that's been handled a million times, especially if you're going to give it to a small child. So this shows the importance of packaging, how important the design is to uh, catch the eye of the shopper, especially catch the eye of the, of the little people who want to buy, and big people who want to buy, <laughs> who want to buy these toys. So um, I guess we can start. Let's go back to Gem, the Gem folder, please. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, go to Gem Doll 1986 layout. This gives you an idea of how we did uh, product did package design back then, because we did not work on computers. I know it sounds really sad, but what we didn't have, we didn't miss. And the way we would do this, as you can see, this is actually done like on a uh, drafting paper. Uh, sometimes I do it in pencil, sometimes marker. I would get all the items that had to be shown on that poster, and then I'd have to do a tight layout of every item shown. You can see, I guess you can see some of the things here, like the Roadster car, and once in a while they'd change something, and then we'd, we'd have to write in, uh, we called it Greeking. When you put in a line where there would be a description, it was called Greeking back then. You just put in the lines, or you'd do like a scribble a line to look like copy. Uh, we'd have to allot for so much space for each item. Let's see, we always had to put the logo in at a certain size. And this is the way we had package design approved. After we got this far, sometimes we would do it in color. I know I did this one in color. Do I have it? No, I'm sorry, I don't have copies of it. You know, you could spend the rest of your life taking pictures of everything you do while you're working and you wouldn't get your work done. So I'm grateful that I have the pictures I have. Anyway, uh, so we would often do them in color. Then they have to be shown to management, and then management would have to approve it. Once it's approved, it comes back to us. We would gather the pieces that are actually going to be shown, including like with the dolls, the outfits. You had to gather all the pieces so that they were accurate. From there, we would have the uh, dolls and such dressed, go to a schedule a photo shoot, which the art directors always did that. They skipped all the scheduling. I was fortunate enough to go to photo shoots in both Boston and New York. I didn't do a ton of them. I did more on the ponies than anything, but it certainly was an experience, especially going to Boston, because I hated driving in Boston. It was terrifying to me. But anyway, um, so we got to take all these items along with us. The dolls had to be dressed and such, and like with the ponies, we had to have all the accessories with it. And then uh, set everything up, have the photo photographer do several shots bring the photography back, they, the management would scour through what they liked. Um, at that point, sometimes they'd want something corrected. We didn't have Photoshop back then. I'm sure everyone in this room knows how to use some kind of Photoshop. We didn't have it back then. If we needed to correct something, we had to send it to this company. I can't remember who they were, but the name of the machine was called a SciTech machine. They charged $500 an hour at the time, which sounds like millions, really. $500 an hour to redo something on the photograph. Often with packaging, what I noticed was when we had little girl models, they were never happy with the model's hair. They always wanted the hair thicker, thicker, thicker. So you'd have these little girls with adorable blonde hair, curls and all, and if some background color showed through, oh, they didn't like that, they had to have it fill in. So that was part of the side teching process. That was often a case where they'd have to add more hair to the little girls or maybe rosiness in the cheeks or whatever. Um, so that's that. Let's see. We'll go to the next. So. I have a little surprise. I'm going to make a phone call. But let me just say, let me do this right now. So I'm going to make, this was like, um, I'm going to make a phone call to, um, We're going to need to bring the phone over. I'm going to, yes, yes, I'm going to bring the phone or very soon. Yeah, I'll go down. Here we go. Don't be um, speaker, just regular phone. Good. Okay. I'm going to make a phone call, and I'll tell you once I get this all together 
who I'm calling. Um, and this is a first. This is a GemCon first, folks. So, um, you're a little distant, but there I There you are. I got you. I got you. How about now? Oh, yay. Okay. I am talking to one of the holograms and the misfits on the phone. Did you get that, Flo? I can't believe it. Okay. And I am also talking to the singing voice of Kimber. Miss Florence Warner. So you want to say hello, Flo? Hello, hello. I am saying hello. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Hi, guys. What's up? <laughs> and and I told them that unfortunately we were just talking about all the gem cons that that I've attended, which is I think this I crashed one, and the one I crashed was in Philadelphia. And if Florence had known about that. She's in that area, so she would have come to that. But unfortunately, oh, you bet, you bet you. <laughs> we didn't know that that Florence was there, so so we we you know we we didn't. I missed you. Yeah. Terrible. I yes. missed you, my beautiful friend Ellen. Oh my gosh. So my beautiful friend Ann. Yeah. Um. So. So. Um. Any questions, guys? Any questions? <laughs> Oh, for Kimber, the singing voice of Kimber. I have, a, I have a question. Question. What is your most um, outstanding memory from working on the Gem and the Holograms show? Okay, did you get that? What is your most outstanding memory from working on the Gem and the Holograms show? <laughs> the fun. The total, <laughs> unadulterated fun. The partnership. The laughing. The, oh my goodness. It was wonderful. That's my memory. Uh, I wish I could do them every day. Uh, and have that much fun. I have a and question. A wonderful people. What, dear? I have a question. Did you like being a hologram better or being a misfit? <laughs> oh, gosh. I like Kimber. Oh, okay. I really like Kimber. <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah, because I, I, I'm I'm kind of a I have gem 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 amnesia. So, um, do you remember the song you sang? I sang a wonderful piece Anne wrote called "I'm Okay." I'm okay. And that's what's one heck of a piece of music, and it was difficult. It was so interesting because it was not an easy piece to sing, and it was. Gave you the freedom to do something. Gave me the freedom to be Kimber. Oh, how wonderful! And that was just the best. I can't tell you oh. what it's like not to be hog tied. You just here, sing this. Oh, God, it's great. <laughs> it was a God. wonderful, a, a wonderful. That was the best. Oh. And it's a beautiful writer. It was always such a pleasure. And is such a wonderful, beautiful writer and person. Brilliant. So, oh, a, you know, it's, we knew we were going to sing for Anne. Everybody was like jumping up and down with joy. Oh, oh. God, it's Annie. Yay! <laughs> it's going to be wonderful. Yeah. Kimber is wonderful. Oh. Anne yeah. made Kimber. Yep. She well, Anne, her right there. Anne wrote all the greatest song. Most, I mean, you know, mostly the you know the theme and just the greatest stuff. So. Yes, she did. Yes. But she made Kimber right there in that song. All right. <laughs> so she has like you know, an evil side and a soft side, which is good. Can you kind of introduce yourself? Yes, I can. I'm Sophie Campbell. Um, I drew the Gem comic from, God, 2000, is it 15? <laughs> I can't even remember. 15 to... You guys probably know this more than I do. I don't remember. Two, yes, 2017. Yeah, because I drew 12 issues. So that's like a little over a year. Yeah. And I work on other stuff, like I do Ninja Turtles. Um, and I do my own stuff, my comics like Wet Moon, which was nominated for an Eisner this summer. But, but I didn't win. 
but it's still pretty cool being nominated. Um, I've been doing comics since, oh God, like 2002, I think. So I've been doing this full time for like quite a while. Um, you know, it's nice because I get to work in my pajamas, and I get to, you know, I get to just roll out of bed, like I did for this show, I just roll out of bed, you know? Um, yeah, so that's nice, and, you know, I've got it, I can't believe I've been doing this for like, I can't even do the math, like, a long, a long time, it's, it's, did you watch Jen? Did you know of Jen before you started working? Yeah, on yeah, because like I'm kind of old, so <laughs> it was on, it, it, were, you you know. were you a fan or you just knew about it? Um, I was a fan when I was little, but I wasn't like a huge TV kid. Okay. So right. like it was on, and like I didn't like I didn't really understand that shows would like come on at like regular intervals you know so like i didn't like i would see gem on like you know like a saturday or something but i didn't understand that it would be on the next saturday also so i would watch it like sporadically and i remember i hated the misfits when i was a kid i didn't like i didn't i didn't get it like i was like why are they so mean to Jerrica and the holograms, like, and like, how come they don't go to jail? And, and I think, I think that was like, that was like an obstacle for me with the show. Oh yeah. And I, I just didn't get it. I was like, I don't get it. But they're, you know, it's not like, it wasn't like, you know, like Skeletor or Hordak, where like, when they lost, they would like go back to their like evil base, you know, and like sulk or something. That that was kind of like their punishment. But, you know, the Misfits, they didn't have that. They were just like, see ya, and then they would leave. And I, I feel like I didn't get it until I was older. And, like, I understood, like, the tone. It's kind of like Washington, D.C. Yes, exactly. Yeah, they got away with everything. It was, like an old, it was like a young and old at the same time. Yes. That's why it wasn't so clear. Right, yeah, yeah. It's a little more black and white, and it's like... You know, it wasn't as clear cut, and I think I just didn't understand that when I was little. Um. I think I answered that earlier, earlier through Shavona. I don't remember when I first heard about it. I mean, I knew it was a thing. But, <laughs> I don't know, like, well, cause like, you know, like usually I think of conventions as like, oh, the one in New York, oh, the one in Boston, oh, the one in whatever, but like Gem Con, it's, it changes. So it's like, like every year it like comes back on my radar. I'm like, oh yeah, Gem Con, the one in Buffalo. <laughs> so I can't remember when I first heard about it. Um, I guess that's a terrible answer. <laughs> I have a question oh. for Ruth. We talked out there about it. Um, on the picture of Synergy that you have, yes. she has her mouth open. Yes. Why is that? You know what? I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of her singing. I might have been thinking of her singing. Oh, wow. And it might have been that whole pouty look started back then. Yeah. It could have been something to do with that. But that's the best that I can remember. Wait, but what, what's, what's weird about Synergy was her mouth open. It, I don't, we just, we, she, she, didn't, she didn't say, it was just the, the image on the TV, I thought maybe she was talking, or, I, you know. She was it, probably it was, yelling. Yeah. <laughs> Jerrica! <laughs> I answered it for you, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, Synergy was made in mom's image, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those are some of the most fun years I had recording. Because of the music, you know, Ann Bryant, of course, is brilliant. And I got to sing with the same folks all the time, which really made our sound very cohesive. It was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the I'm at, what? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I, Ann remembers, and I think I remember this too, that we were the, you know, Flo I talked to Florence earlier today. And, uh -huh. and so the three of us, 
we were the holograms, so we were the good girls, but then we had to flip over to the misfits and be the bad girls. And Anne, Anne reminded me, I think you came up with the idea that when, when we would do ooh, you know, in the holograms, that when we were the misfits, we'd do ew. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that, Diva? Yeah. <laughs> we had a misfit. We couldn't even say our name without an end. Yeah. And you were a great misfit. You yeah. had that sound, girl. Oh, yeah. thank you, dear. You were a bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> so does anyone have anything they want to open? Because I can talk at you guys for hours, and I'm sure you all adore them. Yes. Felonies. Okay, felonies. <laughs> so, yes. do you want to get us started, or? Um, I believe you should because she actually I watched never, the series and started to do a count. I never <laughs> counted. I wrote it all down, and then I left my paper at home. Oh. But basically, <laughs> I mean, they go from a lot of grand theft larceny and attempted murder <laughs> to just knocking things over really quick. Kidnapping, yeah. 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 What's actually really interesting, there's only, I think, two arrests in the whole series. One is Zipper. One is Zipper who gets arrested for helping them cheat at a fake Olympics for some <laughs> and, and kidnapping Kendrick. Yes, and kidnapping That's Kendrick. That's why he got which arrested. Is that is actually illegal, you're right. Um, yes. The other time is K Gem, K -Gem with, the with the pirate. pirate. So yep. the moral of that episode is you do not mess with, with the FCC. Yes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yes. yes. Do not put out a legal, an illegal broadcast. Yes. Pirate radio stations are worse than attempted murder. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the danger of a child. Right. Ashley, you remember they got Ashley in a trunk? I know. Child 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 endangerment. Yeah, I have them all written down. <laughs> I look, I watched the series. I started writing down every time they did something that looked illegal. <laughs> Domestic terrorism. Yeah. I mean, they kind of addressed it once where Raymond, um, Eric, was like, oh, I have good lawyers. And that was it. So <laughs> he does bring up his lawyers every so often. Yeah. With like, because you know, like, he what does, he's like, there's only so much you can pay lawyers to do. And it's just like, okay, but like, do you ever start to wonder if like, there are other bands that misfits music? Cause he like, like, do you ever get the impression Eric like really put all his eggs in one yes, basket? Yes, he the really did. <laughs> I really think he did. And like, that's why he needs to keep them on, cause they're his only band. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first panel that I've ever hosted for Jeff Con. So. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So this morning we are going to talk about the villains in the cartoon of Jim. That's where the focus is going to be. But if you want to, you know, bring in a relevant comment about the movie or the comic book or something like that, then there is room for that. But the thrust is going to be the villains in the cartoon. Now, typically, the bona fide villains we accept are the misfits and the stingers. And we joke a lot about the illegal acts that the misfits <laughs> do and continually get away with. And I remember once, I'd like, to very, I'd like to start with this point, one time I asked Christy Marks what inspired the thought behind some of the illegal things that the, <laughs> that the misfits did that ultimately they ended up getting away with, but where did those, those thoughts come from for the illegal things that they would do? And I love what she told me. What she basically said was what I'm calling situational convenience. <laughs> Kimber was famously kidnapped and stuck in a volcano <laughs> simply because they were in Hawaii. They could. <laughs> and it was available. You can't yes. do that in Los Angeles. Exactly. <laughs> there's, a volcano, there's a volcano there, waiting room, or in this case Hawaii, <laughs> you, use the resources available. Yes, they are on a yacht. And so here comes a speedboat that's going to cause some trouble for the yacht. And that was her point, that some of the things that the Misfits did with, were just based on the circumstantial convenience of what was available for them to make mischief. 
Uh, but a lot of why I relate more to the Misfits as an adult is because a lot of their songs are really empowering. Yeah. Yes. And that they knew what they wanted, and they would like pretty much stop at anything, stop at nothing. Yeah. And I, um, I never saw the song designing one. I never thought that as a negative song. No. Like no, this is taking charge, knowing what you want, and going to go get it. Right. Even as a little girl, that's how I took that. I didn't as a little girl, but as an adult, listening to the song, listening to the lyrics and the verses, she's like, I'm not one of those women that's looking for a husband to take care of. Yeah. Exactly. Like, oh, those poor women. It's all about me. Yeah. You know, and, I'm taking care of me. I don't right. need it. And that empowered me as, as an adult. I have literally been that woman staying at home with the kids, flipping the channel, clipping the coupons, and I'm like, I gotta change this. <laughs> Wait a minute. We all need a little. Yes. <laughs> taking it all. Taking it all is one of my favorite songs because it is about. Getting what you want. Uh -huh. Don't wish for it. Go yes. get it. You want yes. it, go get it. And that's so empowering, especially for girls. I think right. it's fits were inadvertently empowered. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We got the power. whose mission is to promote, further, and enhance all cat life. Since starting in 2001, we have helped over 34,000 cats by either adopting them out, giving them medical treatment, or just assisting them in some way. Since the beginning of this year, we have had 1,700 cats surrendered into our program. Some of them have been strays, some have been personal pets that the owner can no longer take care of, or we also get transports from overcrowded high kill shelters. Since the beginning of this year, we've also adopted out 1,500 cats from our 14 off-site locations. Um, and we are very thankful that Gemcon decided to have 10 Lives Club be the um, organization that the charity auction is benefiting from. And um, it's our supporters who, are, if they're new or if they're old, that keep us going. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we are getting this auction underway, and thank you again. Just want to say a big thank you to our founder of GemCon, Miss Liz Pemberton. Yay. <laughs>
and thank you to everybody from the staff to the attendees to just making it such an amazing weekend. So thank you, everybody. And I I have two lovely assistants, Mana and Vanna. Oh. And we are oh, and she's got her got it. Vanna's very catty in a good way. <laughs> Different than last year. Do a dress. Same Kim ring. Kim ring. Oh, right. oh, wow. So it is time to begin. It's only the beginning of the auction. And we're starting off right with Jen Jerica. It is a Samantha Newark autograph postcard um, with some lovely lettering. And uh, look at that. You get two, you know, two women for the price of one. <laughs> On a postcard. Don't take it there, people. Truly outrageous innuendo. Uh, so this is Samantha Newark, the speaking voice of Jem, her autograph on this beautiful postcard. And uh, we should start that at at least uh, ten dollars. Do we have ten? Do we have ten for? Yeah, we have ten. Do we have twenty? Do we have twenty for Samantha Newark's autograph? Ten, twenty. Anybody for twenty? Fifteen. 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 Ten. Going once. Going twice. Sold to TJ. Oh. Uh -oh. Uh, -oh. uh oh. This next item is unbelievable. <laughs> you will feel stung if you don't take this home with you, and it's sure to cause a riot when you display it as part of your collection. This is an autographed picture of Riot from the Stingers, and it is signed by Townsend Coleman. Ooh. So, Townsend Coleman, and he's also the voice of NBC. I was like, I did not know this. He did the voice of all the must-see must TV promos in the 90s. So you're taking Riot home, you're taking a piece of NBC home. You just, you know, it covers all the bases. Uh, so Townsend Coleman autograph. We're going to start this at $20. So 20 uh, do we have 25 25 do we have 30 30 for Townsend? 30 25 25 Oh, 30 Do we have 35 35 35 Do we have 40 40 40 40 Do we have 45 45, 40, going once, going twice, sold to no, Shan. Oh, Shan, is, is it sold or is it? <laughs> sold to Shan. Sold. <laughs> that caused a ride. That didn't cause a Ooh. A pairing. And we have a pairing. And it is apparent that you should bid on this. Um, so we've got a poster. Show me the way to say it, Louis. And then uh, Marlene Aragon, who is the voice of Synergy. So you need to take Synergy home with you. She was also the voice of the cheetah. Like, I'll get you, Wonder Woman. And so, um, so you get like her autograph, and you get Louise Dorsey Jetta, uh, Desiree Goyette Dance, Will Mignot, and uh, oh, this <laughs> like Carol Jane Tater too. No, it's not. It's uh, Patricia Alice Albrecht. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so we've got the autograph poster and the Marlene Aragon uh, autograph 8x10. Uh, so I'm going to start that at 25. Do we have 25? Do we have 30? 30. Do we have 30? 25? Going once, going twice. Sold to Jan? Oh, 30. Yes, amazing. Uh, 35? Do we have 40? Do we have 40? 35? Going once, going twice. Sold to Jansen. And I, oh my goodness! <laughs> I am I am flabbergasted by this. Uh, this is I am a puppet. No, it is like it's Riot. It's Riot, and he's soft and plush, and you can play with him whenever you want. <laughs> Respectfully, it's a beautiful doll. You want to treat it right. Um, so this is Riot, an original creation, and uh, who donated this one? This, it's Nicole's sister. Nicole's sister made this. So look at this craftsmanship. Look at this perfect sewing. Look at this amazing, you know, believe, don't believe. I believe in this beautiful uh, creation. Um, so this is the handmade riot. And he's causing a riot. This is so unique, it's got to start at $30. So 30, do we have uh, 35? 35, do we have 40? 40? <laughs> I feel like we have four, uh, 40, and, uh, anyone? <laughs> and uh, 40, do we have 45? 45, do we have 50? 50, do we have 55? Uh -oh. Do we have 55? 60? <laughs> 55, going once, going twice, sold to Atlanta. <laughs> she was not going to let Riot go. <laughs> How much did you pay? <laughs> Oh, there's two autographs. This is, oh. <laughs> this has got two autographs. This has got Townsend Coleman and Samantha Newark, Riot and Jem together at last. So this piece is 
two autographs, and we need to start this. It's like it's a perfect match. It is truly outrageous. It's like a dream. And she's even wearing the rock and romance outfit. So, so that's the, so we're gonna start this at 30. We're gonna say 30. Do we have 35? 35 for Riot and Jem together. 35, 35. Oh boy, do we have 40? 40? Do we have 45? 45, 45. Do we have 50? 50. 50. 50 going, 50 going once, going twice. Sold. Oh, it's a <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a pizzazz and patch kid. Um, but this is pizzazz, and look at her. She is a beautiful creation. Again, Nicole's sister, the original creation of excellence. And look at this. She's got everything. She's got one sock. She's got a little bow. She's got her bad attitude. You have to like, <laughs> put her in a corner with your, the rest of your collection. Don't put baby in a corner, but put pizzazz in the corner. She'll make your art look better. Um, so this is the original crepe. Yeah, so this is going to start at, at 30. We got $30 for pizzazz. 30. Do we have 35? 35 for pizzazz. Oh, is everybody? Do we have 40? 40? Do we have 50? 50? 50? Do we have 55? Do we have 55? <laughs> I think 55. Quick once, quick twice. Sold! <laughs> We have some, I, I think some costumes are coming. We have cosplay kits on the way, and just in time for Halloween, people. I know it's hot, but next month, you know, we're going to be cold and wanting to dress up in some costumes. Um, so we've got Synergy. Oh my goodness. We've got, Synergy is a wig, an adult wig, and this is a gem. Uh, large women's gem Halloween costume, which includes, it's got a wig and a microphone and a dress. Um, so, wow, so, the, so they're a lot, right? They're a lot. They're a lot. So it takes a lot of wigs to make you know, a costume happen. Um, so this is the, the, synergy, <laughs> the Synergy wig and the gem costume. Uh, so let's start with this at 25. 25 for the gem costumes. 25, do we have 30? 30 for the gem costumes. $30. 25 going once, going twice. Sold to Jake. <laughs> Oh, she's oh she's a regular doll. Second edition Aja. Second edition Aja. Ooh. Set your sales. Oh, set in set your sales fashion. And I'm getting I'm getting like the Haley Kyoko vibe from the movie where they dress up as the second year fashion. So if you like Haley Kyoko or Aja in Set Your Sales, either either option works. Yeah, she's got gorgeous hair. <laughs> she's flair worn. <laughs> All right, so, the, the, so this doll is beautiful. She should start at 25. 25, uh, do we have 30? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> do, we have, do we have 40, 40, 50? Do we have 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100? 100, going once, going twice, sold to Oh, 100. Oh, girl. 110, 110, 110, 120. 120, 130, 130, 140, 100, 140, 140 going once, going twice. No! 150, 150, 150 going once, going twice. Sold to Sherry. Jamie, oh Jamie! <laughs> we have a Jamie doll. We have a, that is that is a rare creation. Gem girl, amazing! So this is done by Gem girl, who does incredible customs. So Gem girl did some amazing uh, custom work on this. So this is like the Jamie doll from the Midsummer Night's Madness episode. Oh wow! The Midsummer Night's Madness. So get Jamie and be prepared for Minneapolis next year because Midsummer Night's Madness in Minneapolis. So then we've got the shade, because, you know, <laughs> you'll be throwing shade all day when you get Jen's various identities involved. Um, so right now, uh, that is an amazing customer. That's got to start at 30 $30 for Jamie. 
30, do we have uh, 40? 40, do we have 50? 50, do we have 60? 60, do we have 70? 70, do we have 80? 80, do we have 90? 90, do we have 100? 100, do we have 110? 110, going once, going twice, sold to Sherry. Look, it's Jim, pop it like Jim. <laughs> What is it? Well, it's a plush. A plush. She's poor. <laughs> she's a plush, a plush gem, and she's got like the lioness hair going on. And like, shows showtime synergy. You'll hear her roar, just like Katy Perry. Roar. So roar for this beautiful creation. Uh, let's start at thirty dollars. Thirty dollars to forty. Do we have forty? Fifty? Do we have fifty? Sixty? Seventy? 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 Going once, going twice, sold. Sweden, he, it's a very generous donation. Okay, and I'll thank you. you. I will give you a backstory on that. Okay, if you want to, okay. I'm pretty sure you bought it from me. Oh, <laughs> uh, you want it back? Provenance detail. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and Roger Slifer gave it to me. Oh. oh. Had I had known, circumstances would have changed. I probably should have kept it. Oh no, no, it wasn't Roger. Who was the guy, Stefan, that was selling all of the fashion cells? Remember? Yes, that was a... Uh, no, 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 no. It was Roger. I'm oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Okay, so I bought so many extra. He gave that to me for... Ah. Was it in 2008? It was a long time ago. No. So that was never on either. Yeah. That never came up as an actual option. It was just a game. I was like, it's like a timber meeting or something, but I was like, oh, it's a fish. Yeah, yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Wardrobe Pass is signed by Samantha. Christy Martin. Oh, Christy Martin. But it's not signed. It's a, it's a sleeve over it. Oh. oh. I made sure she didn't sign it. Oh. 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 So you got you get a slip cover with Christy Marks' autograph. <laughs> so that is double like that's like a you know a smash. A, it's a flip side fashion. Um, so this is um, this is a cell. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself with Kimber in her cape. Um, so the, she's Kate Winslet in this picture. Um, so this is a cell of Kimber. You can I, it could be like. You can make your own, like, you know, fan fiction about Kimber meets herself, or the princess, uh, <laughs> you know, the princess and the singer, <laughs> or the robot shark. Robot shark. <laughs> uh, so this is Kimber, the cell, and the cell is so hard to find. And Christy Marks' autograph, so this got started at 50. $50 for the cell. Do we have uh, 60? $60 for the cell? 60. Do we have 70? 70 for the cell. 70. Do we have 80? 80 for the cell? Uh, do we have 90? 90. Do we have 100? 100 for the cell. 100. Do we have 110? 110. Oh, the cats. <laughs> the cats. 110. So 100. We had it was a tie at 100. So 110. 110. Okay, 110. Going once, going twice. Sold. And your name, please. Uh, Nikolai. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everybody.